Okay, I'm not sure if I'm on yet. I think I'm coming up now. Looks like we're just waiting for a few people to join. Hello everybody, good morning. It's uh, 10.30 here in Australia. Hope, so, hope everyone is having a great day. Hi Devious. Welcome to the live stream. We're in the workshop. You probably can't see my face. Hey, maybe if I come down here, you'll see me. We're in the workshop doing our first live stream. Um, we're just gonna hang out. I'm gonna get some, a few things ready for a massive sale that we're gonna have this weekend, our annual Easter sale. So I have a whole heap of eggs that I need to turn. Nicole's next door working on some trinkets. But yeah, I've got the laptop beside me so I can read your comments. 8.30 in Boston. Oh, it's not too late then. I was a bit worried that it might be a bit late for my American friends. That's not too bad. Hi, CSD. So can you guys hear me all right? You can see me all right? If everything's good, I'll start turning. Hi, scuba boy. Thailand. How's Thailand this time of year? All right, we've got a few people joining now, so I'm going to start turning. Now, hopefully you guys can hear me once I put my mask on. How's that? Not too bad? You guys can hear me all right? So we've got a sale coming up this weekend and I need to get some stock ready. So we've got a burl egg here, looks like a dragon skin. Hi Michael. Hey Josh. If you got any questions let me know I can answer them in between turning I'm just wrapping in my egg shape with a half inch spindle gouge. I'm just going to my scraper. I 
I'll bring you guys in a bit closer for the next one. I like to take my time now because this is basically the final egg shape. Hey Dana, well Luna and the Colby making an appearance, I'm sure we could make that happen. Uh, these are done slightly different to my standard projects, uh, I don't know if you can see up on the table here but we do batch them out, um, I don't know if you guys can see that but we do batch them out a lot quicker. Nicole's also in the chat, if you want to ask Nicole any questions while I'm turning. But now that I'm happy with that, all the tooling marks are out. Now it's time for the one-handed parting tool. And I'll establish the base of my egg. gouge. I'm just going to shake up the bottom. Hi Tim, hi Celestial. No, Alison, you haven't missed too much. This is the first one. Hi Teresa. It's a bit hard to read the comments with the mask on, but I think I'm getting your names right. I hope I am. So back to the one-handed tool now, and I'm just going to tidy up the bottom.
And then we have our completed egg. All ready for the cold of sand. This one's a tree, and this is a full resin egg, this one. Now the process is basically the same. The only difference is that I don't use the finger, fingernail gouge for this one. I use a carbide cutter. Now this is one that just has a replaceable tip in the end. I'll bring these in a bit closer. Hi Ammo, what time is it in the UK? Uh, bigger projects definitely take longer to sand and polish. Kind of depends how hot it is in the shop, how long I've been turning for. But yeah, I do try and take a break. Uh, with my carbide, obviously I don't sharpen the carbide, but my other ones I normally get about 10 eggs before I need to resharpen. You kind of get a feel for the, the noise that the tool makes. Uh, if it starts to chatter, you know you need to start to sharpen. Um, so yeah, it's all about the feel and the sound. You generally get a good idea when it's time to sharpen. Hi Nina. Yeah, I do get sore wrists. <laughs> Definitely. Hi, Daisy B. Wow, that's early in the UK. Thanks for staying up. We really appreciate it. Hey, Richard. <laughs> All right, let's get going on this next one. Like I said before, same process, just a different tool. Now the reason I use this one over the gouge is because I feel this tool doesn't cut as well on the burl. And I guess, because I've been uh, turning burl for five, six years now, I just find it easier. I'm just more comfortable using the gouge over the carbide. And I've only really been using this one for maybe 12 months, maybe 18 months. I do like the easiness of just Swapping out this tip when it gets dull. Although it can be quite expensive as well. I think they're about $30 each, something like that.
So the purpose of using the scraper is to seal these grooves in here that were left by the previous tool. And I'm just trying to scrape until all those lines disappear. Otherwise you'll be sanding for hours trying to get them out. So the cleaner that you can get it off the lathe, the easier the finishing work's going to be. So the extra couple of minutes you spend here can save you half an hour at the sander. Will Jake ever come back? I don't know. He actually makes an appearance. Um, we filmed a couple of vlogs last week. I don't know if you guys saw Saturday's video, um, but I mentioned that, or did I mention it? I mentioned that a project wasn't ready and it was actually in the freezer. I can't remember if I told you guys that. But we did a project. Uh, we actually finished up filming this morning just before we went live uh, and Jake appears in one of my vlogs which you guys will see later on this week uh, Wednesday or Thursday there's two coming out I think one's Wednesday morning one's Thursday morning and I think he's in the Thursday morning one I can't remember but he's definitely in one of them so yeah he is back I doubt he will come back for a project I mean maybe one day the problem with Jake is he works too much. He starts really early in the morning, so he's very tired by the end of the day. I might go a little quiet while I have a tool in my hand. I'm just concentrating. I don't want to lose any of my fingers. I think this one's one of my favorite combinations. The tree with the purple base, or the purple on top, and the purple base. They're just amazing, and they're all just one of a kind because the swirls are just different every single time. So yeah, that's definitely one of my favorites. 
How about next we try a Rover? I haven't turned a Rover for a while. And it's on Burl as well. Hi Terry. No, it's not too hot today. It is actually 28 degrees in the workshop today, 56% humidity, so it's definitely bearable. Hey Madeline. Working hard, yes I am. Hi Julie. Okay, so we're back to the gouge. Now normally I keep all my tools on the wall behind you guys, which you probably see in my videos, but because I don't want to walk back and forth, I've just got them up here on my table. Because normally the lathe is, is up against the wall. So I only really bring it out for filming when I need to add cameras behind. So I'll finish this egg and then I'll move you guys so you get a different angle. Another thing when turning burl and resin, the pressure and the angle can slightly change from going from the burl to the resin. If the density is slightly different or the hardness is different, so you've got to be careful you don't force chip out. You've really got to, you've really got to listen to your tool. Bye CST, hope you have a great day.
Oh uh, yeah, the burl is an Australian brown melee burl. Is what I mainly use. So this is how it starts out. This is brown melee. And it gets cut off the side of the tree. Or harvested, I guess you'd call it. But yeah, this is how we start. In the first vlog video, which you'll see tomorrow, you'll see how I turn this to this. Well, close to this. But that's in tomorrow's vlog. Now when I'm turning the timber ones, I'm looking for any tear out. Now if you have sharp tools, you shouldn't get any tear out, but it can occasionally happen. Because uh, if you do, you definitely want to get your tear out out of there before sanding. Otherwise you will be sanding for hours. See you Madeline, have a good sleep. Yeah, sorry Josh, no super chat on this one. Uh, might be able to set it up soon. If I do miss anyone's question, just answer it again because it is scrolling past the screen. Yeah, after I stabilise it, it is hard. Yeah, very hard. Hi Claire, I'm very well, thank you. Cornwall. I'm not sure where Cornwall is. But my parents grew up in Hull. Is that close to Hull? turn the timber ones, I've got to be very careful with the amount of pressure I put on it after I start turning the base, because they do have a tendency to snap off if you're not too careful. Hey Fred, uh, probably not anytime soon, but I would definitely love to go there. I have been once, uh, many, many, many years ago, and I quite enjoyed it, so I would definitely love to go back. Yeah, probably not anytime soon, but Nicole and I will definitely get there one day. left a bit of a lip down the bottom here. That's 
transfera. Now the one thing I do love about turning these eggs, and you can see it already, is that they're never the same. They always look different. They're all always different shapes, different sizes. It's always cool to do it that way, like not out of a mould. We have a lot of collectors. Um, people have bought over 20, 30. I think I have a few people who have bought 40 and they just add them to their collection. And they send me all the photos of them set up in their display cabinets. They've got lights for them. They look awesome. And I think you can do that with having the different shapes. I think if they all look very uniform, it may look a bit boring. So yeah, having them all different is definitely a better way to go. Okay, I think I might move you guys now. Hopefully you won't get seasick when I move the camera. I'll try and do it really slow. How's that? No one got sick on me? Oh, thanks, Eric. Really appreciate that. Uh, yeah, if you want a better finish, definitely speed is better. Uh, I do slow down at the very end, mainly to stop uh, chatter, because I get chatter at the end if I, if I go fast, so, but yeah, speed's definitely the key. Thanks Chris, I really appreciate it. Yeah, purples are my favourite too, Dana. Oh, that's awesome. Thanks, Terry. I'm glad he likes it. Oh, that's right. Oh. How did the shift knob go, Josh? Oh, that's awesome. Thanks, Teresa. Okay, let's get going on this next one. Oh, put another purple tree on. Now, hopefully, the camera isn't in the way. I may just have to move you a little bit. So let me know how that is. If it's a good view or if you want me to change it up again. We're right in the action now. Might have to move you here. Oops, sorry, a bit further.
Now you can go back again. It's like musical chairs, isn't it? Maybe I should have left this on the other side. Right, I'm just going to quickly throw you back. You want to play with the shaving curls. They do look quite fun, don't they? Oh, thanks, Teresa. Oh, is it Teresa or Therese? Sorry, I didn't realise that that wasn't an A on the end. Thanks, Luna. Yeah, recycling shavings. We'll do another one of them. I think we have a container somewhere with some really colorful shavings in it. Thanks, Richard. Have a good sleep, buddy. Sure, what's your sister's name? Happy birthday to Richard's sister. Oh, there is two Teresas. We have a Teresa and a Therese, is it? Karen. Happy birthday, Karen. Hope you're having an awesome day. Hope you got lots of presents. Okay, I remember that now. I only just got new glasses too the other week. But my new glasses had the, the triple lenses in them. So right down the bottom is reading and then computer and then long vision. So I'm kind of struggling to tilt my head to get it in the right focus.
I think we'll finish this egg up and then we might go see what the coal's doing. Okay, let's go next door and see what Nicole's up to. Let's take this off first. I'm just gonna take you guys off the tripod. There we go. Hey everyone. Hope you're enjoying the live stream. Make sure I can see myself. But I've got some eggs here we'll go take to Nicole so she can start sanding. Oh, I better just take three. Okay, let's go. There she Hi. is. Hi. What are you up to, darling? Oh, just getting some trinkets ready for the sale. Yep. Yep. So there's some for you. Thanks. To sand when you got time. Yep. And these are our little trinkets. So the sale that we're having this Saturday is our annual Easter sale. And we always like to give away something in, in the orders. And this year we've tried to make as many little trinkets so that Everyone gets something. Yeah. And we're going to have some big pieces as well. Yeah, I've got a couple of these. Oh, yeah. Cool little trays. Little candle, little tea light candle oh, holder. Oh, candle holder, yeah. 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 So Nicole's been busy over the past couple of months just with all her extra resin, just making trinkets because we like to prepare for this sale. I'm also going to have uh, a couple of Rubik's balls. Uh, I've got a dichroic ball over there that we could probably add into someone's order. So... Yeah, we'll go through some old projects, see what we got. But yeah, we're definitely trying to aim to give everyone something this year. Yeah. Which is nice, just to say thank you. But yeah, how, how are you going? Yeah, it's hot out here. It's hot, yeah, I know. I know, there's no air con in here, but there is a big open door, which, which helps. A and a fan, yep. Yeah. So if you guys want to see Nicole's little setup, uh, this is where she does her sanding. There, she got herself a little light, and when she's done, she looks for imperfections through the magnifying glass. So that's her little setup. And yeah, got all her molds filled. Yeah, they're all still. <laughs> they're all. They're all still setting. They're still a bit tacky. Oh, they're still setting yeah. those ones. Yeah. Yeah. Very good. All right. Well, I'm going to take these guys back into the workshop. No worries. And I'll leave you to your <laughs> sanding, sanding, your filing, <laughs> Bye. whatever it may be. Okay, let's head back into the workshop. Pop you guys back on the tripod. up on the comments if 
probably missed a few while I was carrying you guys around. Skulls, skeletons, insects. I do have a few insects. I have a container somewhere. I'm not sure where it is. Nicole's probably put it away, but I have a heap of beetles and bugs and spiders. Whenever a family member finds something dead on the ground, they put it in a container and then they give it to me. Uh, my sister-in-law does it a lot. I've got so much like spiders and insects from her. I think she even gave me a bone once that she found in the yard. So I've been meaning to cast that. Yep, behind the scenes. Hope you guys enjoy it. Uh, I make the waste block. So I buy like a three inch by three inch square piece of pine. I normally just go down to the local hardware and then I put it on the lathe and I, and I make all my waste blocks. So I basically just cut a dovetail and then leave about half an inch or so. And then as I clean the waste block up, obviously they get a bit smaller and smaller until eventually you throw them out, but you can reuse them a fair few times. The fish are doing well. Uh, we have a heap of shrimp uh, and guppies are going crazy. I'm not sure if you saw the vlog where I had to trim the pearl weed. So when we went away on the cruise to PNG, uh, I was meant to trim the tank beforehand, but I ran out of time. Uh, and then when we got back, it was like super duper high. And the taller that pearl weed is, the guppies just go crazy. They, they just breed so much, but it's, it's nice. They're colorful. I love dead things. <laughs> A big black Mississippi grasshopper. That sounds interesting. Thanks, Celestial Sushi. Hope you have a good night. All right, let's get back to some more eggs. Uh, we'll try resin one again. What have we got? How about a cow? I'll do a cow. Is there anything else you guys want to see or know about? What's everyone making at the moment? Are you a maker yourself or do you just like watching people make? Do you turn on the lathe? Do you just do resin trinket stuff like Nicole does or what are you guys up to? My favorite resin casting. Wow. Um, gee, I've done a few. Um, my ship in the bottles, I really love them. Uh, what else have we got? I really loved making the eight ball shift knob. I think because it was a bit more technical. Uh, I really enjoyed that one. Um, gee, I don't know, you've caught me on the spot there. Definitely my uh, shipping bottles, they were quite enjoyable. I'm sure I could think of others. What have you made for your daughter's wedding, Fred? I want to know why the bricks are that yellow creamy colour in Australia. It's, um... It's... Uh, what do they call it? Rendering? I rendered it. I rendered the front. So I built in the, the garage and I, I rendered it. They're normally not creamy. <laughs> food experiments. I would like to do food experiments, but I kind of felt like you guys were over the food experiments. I did have a couple of extras lined up, but I kind of bailed out on them. Because I felt like maybe maybe you guys didn't want to see it anymore. It's very hard. YouTube is... It's it's hard, man. Um, as much as you want to make what you want to make, you really have to listen to your audience. So if they're not keen on it, then you've got to back off it. So um, I try and listen to you guys as much as possible. I read everyone's comment. Uh, I might not get to reply to everyone, but I do read everyone's comments. So... 
Uh, yeah, maybe no food for the time being. Dressmaker, that's cool. Miniatures. Six inch square log cabin, that'd be cool. I'd like to see that. Send me some photos of that when you're finished. Back to the Future series, yes, I do need to finish that. The story behind the Back to the Future is I struggled to find, so in my head, I wanted to do the scene where the train was pushing the DeLorean and it was kind of about to come off the edge of the tracks and I couldn't find, so obviously I had the DeLorean from Back to the Future 3 but I couldn't find a train that matched the size and looked like it. And I bought like, must have been 15 trains, like off eBay, off Amazon, the local toy shop, like Nicole will tell you, I've got so many bloody trains and none just fit like how I wanted it to. And it kind of frustrated me and I got to the point where I put it in the back burner and it's, it's on my list. Like I have a list of all the projects I want to make and the Back to the Future 3 is on the list. But because there's a certain scene that I want to create, and I feel I can't get this damn train, um, that's why I've been putting it off. So if anyone knows of a train that would suit the little model I have, which is the same size model for the first and second one, let me know. Send me a link. I'll buy it. Oh, wooden cake stands on candy stands, that's cool. Hi oh, Lady Phoenix. Quilting blocks, is that like to make a, a, a big quilt? Are you gonna give that to someone? Is that why you're making it? Resin rings, I have thought about resin rings. I'm just worried that there's so many different sizes that I don't know if I'd have the time to make a ring in so many different sizes, unless I just pick a common size, I guess if there is one, and just stick to that. But, all right, we're gonna get back to turning. Now, is this a good angle for you guys? Let me know. Do you wanna be moved or are you happy to watch from here? I'm just, I'm, I'm pausing for, uh, I'm pausing for the comments. A wooden tray filled half deep with resin. Oh, concert tickets and stuff. That's cool. I like that idea. Okay, looks like you're all happy with this angle. Let's get going. Put my hot helmet back on. It is a powered helmet, so it kind of does blow a bit of air on my face. Which isn't too bad, I guess. Okay, what do we got? Resin. So back to the carbide tip.
Uh, it's not smoke. You're probably just seeing extremely fine resin dust. It does get hot. Uh, I do try and move my tools around uh, quite often so they don't get too hot, but yeah, it's not smoke, it's the fine resin dust. Now, did you guys just hear that little chip sound? Now, I don't know if you can see it, but right there, I created a couple of chips. Now, if you create chips in your resin, you have to back right off because if you go too hard, a chip will create another chip and then another chip and another chip. And then before you know it, Hang on, I can't pull it off the wall. I need to show you something. If you keep chasing a chip, that's what happens. Your chips just get bigger and bigger and bigger. And if you don't have your face shield on, you get these right in your face. So this is a chip out that happened to me probably a couple of years ago now. So I stuck it right there. That's old mate's nose. But yeah, if you've got a chip out, don't chase it. The best thing to do is just back your pressure off and go nice and slow. So now that I have this little chip out here, this isn't too bad, this is a tiny one. But the idea now is to do super light passes and until you get that chip out, out or gone. Because like I say, if you chase the chip out, you're gonna create more chip out, more chip out, more chip out. So really slow once you've got one. And that was a minor one. See you, Fred. Have a good sleep. Now you haven't missed, missed much. <laughs> you might have missed Nicole. This stream will end up getting uploaded to the channel so you guys can just go back and re-watch it. Now I'm just going to slowly go over this chip out. Until it's gone. And you can normally, you can normally hear, like you listen. Listen for your chip out. The tool will make like a, a grating noise over it. And you just want to go till you can't hear it anymore. And then once your chip out's gone, you can just go back to your normal speed and pressure. That looks like it's gone.
Uh, you can sand it out, but um, sanding takes down such small microns that to sand a chip out, out uh, you can do it, but you're talking half an hour, maybe an hour, depending how bad it is. It's always better to try and clean it up with a tool, um, providing that you've got the thickness to do that, obviously. Yeah, you can sand it out, but it does take a while. Okay, the cow's finished. I really love these greens too. You put a bit of yellow in it as well. These look really nice. Okay, let's go for a shark. Who's a fan of sharks? I'm, I like sharks, but I don't go swimming that much because I'm actually scared of them. So, but I do like them. Like, you know, they're a nice creature. So that's why we decided to make the sharks because they're a bit of a favorite of mine, even though they scare me. Uh, the speed of the lathe, uh, so obviously over the years, because I've turned a lot of eggs, I have my belt on the lowest setting, which gives me 1200 RPM max, so I always spin straight to the max dial of 1200 RPM, but it all comes down to sound, you've really got to listen to your tools, listen to the noise it's making, uh, if you're too slow, you may get a, a like a howling noise or a whirring noise so just turn it up but 1200 for me works well especially on these smaller pieces um i don't normally turn bigger stuff but uh for me 1200 it seems to work fine i do turn it down to clean up my bases just so i don't get chatter but yeah that's kind of how you know but the best thing i can suggest is just listen to your tools they'll pretty much tell you exactly what's going wrong Shark Week. Yeah, we used to see Shark Week all the time. I'm not sure they even show it anymore. But I don't I don't have cable anymore, so that's probably why we don't watch Discovery. But yeah, I, I used to love Shark Week. You don't like sharks, but you have two. Oh two shark tattoos. I read that wrong. I thought I thought you had two sharks. Two shark tattoos. That's great. Okay, let's get this shark done. Now, did someone want to see Luna before? I thought I saw a message. 
If you want to see Luna, let me know. I'll get uh, Nicole to go grab her. Hey STO, uh, oh yeah, I'm turning a shark. There's a shark in this egg. Well, that was quick. All right, Luna's here. Someone was uh, missing her granddad. Oh, <laughs> I'm all covered in oh, resin. Oh, you're covered in resin. Oh, where's the camera? The camera's here. Here you go, you say hi. Down lower. <laughs> <laughs> oh, down no, here. That's delayed. <laughs> <gasps> Luna, look, you're on TV. Look here. Say hi, everyone. Say hi, everyone. They're like, no. Okay, she doesn't seem very no. interested. And her mum hasn't seen her new haircut yet. <laughs> <laughs> uh, darling, if you're watching, we gave Luna a haircut. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That's enough for Luna. Okay. Let's get this shark turned. She is a cutie. I think she's only uh, two years old. And she's amazing. She's been staying with us for a little bit. Man, she is the cutest dog. Someone got a haircut. <laughs> Yes, she did get a haircut. She looks better, don't you think? All right, let's get going. It was only a little trim, darling. Don't stress. <laughs> she does look beautiful. Gorgeous. Uh, it doesn't take too long to clean the shavings up. As I'm, as I'm turning, they kind of gather in one spot on the lathe. So I'm able to just like pick up handfuls and throw them straight in the bin. Normally I keep the bin where you guys are at the moment and I just flip them behind the lathe. So we're making a bit of a mess at the moment. Yeah, it doesn't take too long really. Uh, Luna is, uh, oh, Nicole's already answered it, Poodle Cross Maltese, same as Abby, our eldest dog, which you'll see in the vlog this week. Abby's 17 this year, but she's suffering from a bit of dementia, so... It's becoming a little bit of a struggle, but she's okay. I think some days she forgets how old she is and she bounces around like a two-year-old, but I, I think having Luna stay with us as well, bring her out.
I'm not sure if she heard me. Hey, doll, do you want to grab Abby and bring her out? the old girl. Hey. How you going, darling? Yeah. <laughs> you bring her a bit closer. A bit closer? Yeah. Is that hey. Right, hey? hey. Look how grey she is now. Hey, beautiful girl. Yeah, she used to be as black as Luna. Yeah, she's pretty much fully deaf now. She can't really hear anything. And her side is going. She got some, I think, cataracts. cataracts yeah. yeah. She's getting there. Hey. Not bad for, what, 16 and a half nearly? Yeah. Yeah. I'm assuming Molly's going crazy in there. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, put her back and I guess bring Molly bring out. Bring Molly out. You can't leave Molly out. You can't leave Molly out. No, okay. uh, she's our baby. When Molly comes out, it'll be like a bull at a gate. that shark. Shark is finished. Alright, let's take you guys off the tripod and you can see Molly. Miniature horse. Mini, mini horse we call her. Here she is. <laughs> Molly, you want to say hi to everyone? She's the most excitable dog. Come here. Where's Dad? Hey. She's a standard poodle. Aren't you? You're a good girl. You're yeah. excited to be out here, aren't right? yeah. We don't bring the dogs out too often. Uh, we don't like them being around the resin, so. It's too yeah, we bring her out. We bring the dogs out every now and again. Only because sometimes we can be in the workshop for 12 hours at a time. So... They do miss us, even though we do go inside, you know, quite often. Um, they do miss us, so. All right, let's go. We bring them out every now and again. So that's Molly. So you met all three. Yeah, she did get soaked. That's right. the The pumpkin episode. Do you guys remember that? That was a funny episode. She loves the water. Oh, two o'clock in the UK. Thanks, Dazzy B. Appreciate you uh, hanging out with us. Deaf, not deaf. <laughs> oh, hey, Michael. Look out for Molly. Man, Molly is like, when we've been out and we come in, she is so boisterous. 
and she's amazing. If I could clone a dog, I would have a hundred mollies. She's beautiful. Uh, it doesn't have an odor. If you, if if you have a blunt chisel and you're creating heat, the heat will give off an odor. Like so, if you heat resin, it'll start to smell. It's like burning plastic. So the whole idea is not to burn the plastic. Go nice and easy. Have sharp tools, and if you if you stick to that, uh, you won't have an odor. See you, Josh. Have a good night. Yeah, the sale will be live uh, 10 o'clock Saturday morning, Australian time. So I think that's Friday afternoon for my American friends. Uh, we'll have 10% off. We'll have random gifts added to orders. So it should be quite fun. Yeah, the shark is cool. Really cool. 8.50 in Texas. So Texas, is that the middle of America? So you got east and west, is, is that central? So I'm not too too clued up with uh, all the times. I kind of know that uh, California and LA is the west side and New York is the right side. And then I think, is it Texas in the middle? South central in the middle, yeah. So that means, so New York could be, if it's 8.50 Central, what does that make New York? Like 9.30 maybe? Lower, Lower Central, 8.30, Wisconsin. So that's, so all you guys are in the, in the middle then? Wisconsin, Lower, Texas, anyone else in the middle or? He goes on the coast, Boston. Okay, so Boston, that's New York, right? Oh, thanks, presidential tourist. I saw your videos of unboxing them. Thanks for that. Glad you enjoy them. Ohio, 953. Oh, so that's a, so you're an hour. So Ohio is east coast then if you're an hour massachusetts door door county so you guys have a lot of counties hey and same as the uk we don't have counties here in australia louisiana i mean oh, i live in texas okay so Louisiana, is that where like the gators are? So what would, so what would LA be right now? Are they like three hours, three hours different? Crawford County. Uh, for me, it's 11.54, just coming on midday, Tuesday. Oh, LA, LA is three. Three hours, oh, three hours. Okay, so what's that, five to, so they're five to seven. That's not too bad. I wasn't sure what time to do this uh, live stream because um, I was trying to make it so that I know that uh, most of my followers are in the US and and then next is Australia and the UK. So that's where my fan base is. So I was trying to find a happy medium to where everyone got to see a bit of something. So hopefully the time I started was a good time. Let me know. Let me know if you think I should have started it earlier or later because it was 10.30 for me. So I was up this morning and had breakfast and uh, we filmed um, we filmed the outro for this week's video, uh, Nicole and I, which was quite funny because it didn't really go to plan. But I guess it, it was an experiment, so kind of to be expected. But yeah, if you think I should have done it earlier, let me know. I could have. 
Um, okay, Devious, thanks for tuning in. 3 a.m. in Denmark. Michael, you should be in bed. But thanks for hanging out. Florida, 9.55 in Florida. Scotland, 1.53. Alison, you should be in bed too. Hope you guys don't have work tomorrow. 1.57 in the UK. Debbie, have you got work tomorrow? Are your daughters in Denmark? Wow, so nice to hear where you guys are from. Like sometimes, you know, I live in the workshop and you forget that there's a whole bloody world out there, you know? People everywhere. So good to see. Okay, this one is a full resin glowing. Now, I'm not sure if I can show you guys it glowing. But, just for the sake of it, let's have a go. Let me turn the lights out. can't turn my main light out because it's um, done via Wi-Fi on my phone and the phone is streaming unless Nicole can turn it off on her phone but yeah let's give this a bit of UV light and we'll watch this color I love these we call these the northern lights get that oh I can't get it to work well oh, Nicole just turned the light out okay hang on I got one more light over here to turn off let's see if this works can you see it there's still a lot of ambient light in here but it is glowing that's cool. I didn't think we were going to get that to work. Okay, Dolly, you can turn the light back on now. Now, once these are turned and polished, uh, they do glow a lot better. It was a bit hard for the UV light to get in there. But if you don't have a UV torch, you can just go whack it out in the sun and bring it in. Or even just normal lights will work. But the quickest way to do it is with a UV torch. All right, see ya, STO. Have a good sleep. Okay, let's get going on the next one. Is there anything else you guys want to see? Let me know, leave a comment. Let me know if you want a different camera angle too. I might be able to actually raise you guys up a little bit. And have to try that.
How's that for something different? Hopefully I didn't make you sick moving you around. Oh, is it in focus now? How's that? Is that good? Uh, I've been doing this now for probably six years, maybe seven years. So yeah, just kept practicing and get better and better and better. And you learn, like, I'm very much self-taught. Uh, so basically, I've been learning from my mistakes. Which I, I feel like it's the best way to do it. Ben, do I have any tattoos? Uh, yes, I do. Uh, quite a few, actually. Uh, I got my whole top of my arms done. I got the tops of my legs are done. Uh, I got my wrist done. My ankles done. I might make another video about them, I think. Yeah, 12 hour shifts can be quite difficult. Thanks, Eric. Blasting, power plant blasting. Like with actual explosives or, um, I'm assuming it's not sandblasting. <laughs> Uh, 
Uh, obviously, we keep resin and dyes in stock. But if there's something to go inside uh, of resin or something like that, we pretty much order it. We do try and think about projects and what we need and then order. Because sometimes it can take six to eight weeks to get some things. But our basic, like, high turnover stuff, like resin and inks and dyes, we keep all that in stock. Dynamite. Yeah, I bet it would. Wow, that's amazing. Hope you stay nice and safe. Look at that. That's looking beautiful. Look at the colours on that base. I'm actually a big fan of the darker bases. We used to do them a lot and then we kind of, we strayed a little bit and we started going for the lighter blues and purples and greens. But we started to shift back to these darker ones again. And when this one gets sanded and polished, it'll look amazing. These ones, these ones don't last long in the store. They sell really fast. How about we try a wooden one next? This one's got a little jellyfish in it. A little plastic jellyfish, not real of course. And this one will glow as well. I'm nearly new for Nearly new. I'm nearly due for a new chuck. I think this one's pushing a couple of years old now and it keeps locking up on me every now and again. Have to head out to Heron Forbes and get another one. Hey Perrin, how are ya? A singing egg. Yeah, sometimes they do like to sing. Uh, what made me want to start a YouTube channel? Oh, 
I guess I just wanted to show people how to do things, I guess, and it just started as a hobby and then kind of grew from there. How many tattoos do I have? Uh, two, three. I probably have about 17 tattoos, I think, all up. A table, yeah, I do want to make a table. Um, the unfortunate thing with tables and things like that is we don't, our workshop's not quite big enough. This shop's about six meters by three meters. Uh, so just a single car garage, pretty much. And if we set up to do a table, uh, you can't really work in here because of the dust. So it's something that you'd have to try and do on a Friday afternoon and not be in here for the weekend. But we just find it a bit difficult with the size of space we have at the moment. But yeah, I'd love to get into table making. I think they're beautiful. How many eggs do we make a year? Wow. I'm not sure. Uh, I tend to try and make maybe 10 a week, maybe 15. So uh, I'm not sure what that is. Maybe 50 a month. So 250 a year maybe depends um if we have sales how many sales we run um we do we have cut back a lot um we have worked probably harder than we should have in the last three years and we're kind of a bit burnt out so we're definitely backing off and not making as many as we used to hi hannibal hey connie Connie is actually my first ever channel member. So thanks, Connie. I appreciate your support. You have been with me since the start of my memberships. Okay, so we've got jellyfish on here. It's a wooden one. So I'm going back to the carbide tool. Now I'm just going to move these back just a little bit. I'm nearly hitting you with the back of my tool rest. So, okay, let's get going. Not cowboy. We need the the uh, gouge. Almost got the cowboy. If you guys missed it earlier on in the stream, because we started out with the wooden eggs uh, about four or five years ago, I only ever had the high speed steel tool. And I just got so used to turning with these that I can't use the carbide tool on it. It just, I don't know, either I'm just so used to using these or what, but I can't get it to work as well. So I'll always go back to my high speed steel gouges to do the burl. I think it might be like a muscle memory thing.
Now I'm switching to the skew chisel to take all my grooves out. Uh, yeah, I've been recognised a few times, uh, more so when I do trade shows and things like that, people will recognise me. Thanks Holly, glad you're here. Yeah, we love our cruise too. In actual fact, uh, speaking of cruises, we do have another one booked. Uh, it might sound a bit strange that we're going on another one so soon, but we used to cruise every year, and then when COVID hit, uh, we obviously couldn't cruise for three years, but we still kept saving our money up because we'd cruise every year. And uh, this year we decided to book three cruises since we had the money. And yeah, we actually have another one coming up in a few weeks. It's only a short one though. I think it's only three days, uh, just like a long weekend. So you guys will be able to see that one on the vlog. We're heading up to uh, Whit Sundays for that one. Thanks Mama, we appreciate you being here. Uh, what got me into making eggs? Uh, I think I just liked the ability to have different shapes and different objects and different colors. Uh, and they were smaller, like more of a, a collector's item, I guess you'd call it. Um, we have a lot of collectors that like to get different styles of our eggs. So yeah, I think that's why we went down the egg road. You love all our creations except the egg. Now, are we talking about the egg egg? The egg that we all know about? <laughs> yes, the real egg. Oh, I think you guys want to see it? Hang on. I think I've got it. I think it's in here. Somewhere. Maybe not. It was in here. Hey, doll, do you know where the egg is? This is the bacon. Remember the bacon? And this is the mushroom. Let me see what else I've got. I've got the apple and the orange. Remember these two? Remember the orange that floated during pot cam? They still look amazing. I mean, I wouldn't want to eat them, but I wonder if you could still grow an apple tree from this apple. Looks like you can. I just heard Nicole yell out, she's gonna go find the egg. See how the egg's holding up. 
That's got to be, uh, geez, the egg. What are we talking now? Three years, maybe four years for the egg? Let me see what else I can find. Now I found something that you guys have never seen before. My first attempt at a massive flower. Look at that. It didn't it didn't go to plan. <laughs> it, it used to be a beautiful red color, I think, and it just went yucky. You can see like all the dye like ran out of it. But yeah, this this project never made it to YouTube. Uh, I do have all the footage though, maybe one day, maybe I'll put it on the vlog channel. You guys can see the failure of that. And Nicole just brought in the egg. This is how it's looking now. Doesn't look too different, hey? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> when, you, when I was bringing it in, in the sun, you can actually see through some of the parts. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh yeah, look at that. Was that always like that? I'm not sure. Oh no, I think it was. I think, oh, I don't know, it was that long ago. I think the original egg video might have been four years ago. Oh my gosh, that ages. Four years, and then we cut it open a year later, remember? Oh, that was disgusting. And then, to try and hide the smell, we recast it again. And believe it or not, it doesn't smell at all. It's actually quite good. No, it wouldn't be here if it yeah, smelled. Yeah, well, this, where'd you get this from, the office? <laughs> yeah. So this, this sits in the office, so uh, if it did smell, we would know. But yeah, definitely not. So I'll probably, I should probably get that off screen. That's a, that's a way too much air time. <laughs> Thanks, doll. That's all right. I did like the bacon episode, though. That smelled really good. Saved it, yeah, I did save it. Yeah, the mushroom did hold up very nice, actually. Yep, yeah, that's the one I cut open. Turn a failure into a big egg, yep, yeah, that is a very good idea. I do often wonder that. I wonder if when I'm long gone, like, what if, what if the world ran out of apple trees and then one day they dig up my apple and then they could all have apple trees again? That's a nice thought. <laughs> Sorry, Alison, making you hungry. Claire, what are you gonna eat? Cast me in resin. <laughs> No, I don't think I don't think I could do that. <laughs> That's not the first time I've been asked that either. The flower turned, yeah. I probably will do something with the flower. Because not only do I have that flower, but I've also got a couple of other ones. These are more projects that never saw the light of day on YouTube. This one's... There's that one. There's this one. This one held its colour fairly well. Still looks kind of yellow. I think I might have one more. got this one that lost all its color now there is one that I did forget about and I made this using a rose that I bought for Nicole for Valentine's Day oh gee I think it'd be two years ago now and I was trying to replicate the Beauty and the Beast rose with the petals on the ground 
but it just lost its color and went a bit translucent and I just wasn't happy with it. Like it's a nice casting. If it had held its color, it would have been brilliant. I was gonna turn it into the like nice dome on the top there and I was gonna have a beautiful wooden base for it. I was gonna try and put some lights in it. But just the way it lost its color, it just stopped me. Stopped me from, from continuing on with it. So that's another video you guys never got to see. I mean, I do post a lot of my failures, but sometimes when I just have this vision in my mind and it just doesn't quite go and I get pretty disappointed, I just kind of go, oh, well, I, I don't have the motivation to keep going with the project. So it just gets put in the corner of the workshop. Let's finish up this jellyfish. We're nearly done. Did you see me stab the bottom of the wood there? I was actually thinking about moving the camera and I wasn't fully concentrating, which isn't a good thing. You should always be 100% concentrating when working on a machine like this, but it wasn't too bad. I got it out. You guys want a different camera angle? Or are you happy with this one? I need a bloopers video. No, we don't. <laughs> we have a lot of bloopers. Yeah, the flowers do look cool. Paint them. I could try paint them. Or maybe even dye them first, maybe. Food. Oh, yeah, food colouring. Yeah, that's a good idea. Silica gel. I have heard that. We did try hanging some up in the laundry in the dark, um, but they just kind of ended up shriveling. So they were no good. Might have a banana, that's a good idea. Good carbohydrates. Oh, hey Nina, yeah, up the road in Bethania. Different, okay, I'll move it. Let me move the camera for you guys. Sorry, it's a bit shaky.
How's that? Is that a good one? I'm not using my uh, big tripod for this uh, camera because I'm just, I'm just using my phone to stream this. It's just like on a, on a cheap tripod. Absorption dies. That's interesting. I'll have to look into that. Hi, Jessica. What time is it in Reno? Okay, that's a better angle. Nice. Okay, so our jellyfish is finished. Seven thirty. Oh, that's a good time. It's not too late. I was a bit worried that I was keeping everyone up. Let's try this one. Look at this one. This is a color shift on a full resin purple base. Love the color shifts. So now that we're back to the resin base, I'm going to go back to the cowboy tip. Yeah, this one will look amazing. When this one's finished, it'll be unbelievable.
10.30 on the East Coast now. 7.30 in oh, Washington State. Is that different to Washington? Like Washington, D.C.? Tuesday in Denmark now, Michael. Nine thirty SW is that uh Wisconsin Columbus Virginia Hi Ben, it's your favorite Hi Eloise How are you doing? For anyone that doesn't know, Eloise is Jacob's girlfriend. You better be nice now because everyone knows. <laughs> oh, upper left. Okay. So different to, different to Washington. District of Columbia. I always thought Washington was on the East Coast. Is that wrong? I always thought it was New York for some reason. Okay, Washington State is different. Uh, Easter eggs for the holiday. Uh, we're making these eggs for our annual Easter sale, which, uh, which is our biggest sale of the year. Uh, that'll, that'll start this Saturday. So as the video goes live, uh, everyone will be able to get 10% off the eggs in the store. And we're gonna add uh, a little trinket with every order. West Coast, yeah. So is Washington DC on the west coast or east coast? Because is Washington like your um the head? The, what's the what's the main state in the US? I know uh what's, what's the capital state I guess maybe is it? Oh on the east coast, okay. Christmas themed egg, yeah, we could do that for you. Providing we have the time and we have um, the pieces in stock or we can get them, as long as it's nothing too crazy, uh, we're happy to do it, but we are quite busy for the customs. But yeah, something like a Christmas themed egg, like with a Christmas tree in it or a snow theme, we can do that for sure. It's best probably just to message me on, on Etsy about that. East Coast, yeah. So Washington State and Washington DC are both on the East Coast. Oh, sorry, I read that wrong. Washington State's on the West Coast. I keep getting East and West confused. We live on the we live on the East Coast of Australia. Uh, we've done resin uh we've done sprinkles before yeah pacific northwest is that up like um near canada and stuff is canada northwest i do try and learn uh my geography for you guys every time someone places an order i, I always i'm always very curious as to where you guys are Uh, I have been to the United States once. Uh, it was a work trip a very long time ago. Uh, I went to um, I went to San Francisco. I then went and did the Rubicon Trail in Lake Tahoe. And then we drove to Las Vegas and LA and then flew home. But we didn't get to spend much time there. It was, with a group of workmates, so we couldn't really go off and look at anything.
Canada, British Columbia, is that like different to just Canada or is it a different part of Canada? Louisville. Where's Louisville? Is that central? Sounds central. Oh, hey, Philip. How's Gimpy today? Want some warm up there? What am I doing? I haven't finished yet. I'm loving reading all your comments. Oh, Kentucky. Muggy, yeah. It's been muggy down here too. It's been popping on raining the last couple of days. Kentucky, so is Kentucky in the middle? Or is that on the edges? Thanks mate, yeah we do probably plan on doing a few more I think. It's nice just hanging out. It feels a lot more relaxed uh, on the vlog channel as well. I feel very pressured on the main channel. I don't know whether it's because I've just got so many subscribers or what, but this channel is very laid back. It's one of the reasons I wanted to make it. Look at that, this one is gonna be amazing. I might give this one straight to Nicole now so she can start sanding it. And then I'll give it a buff and then we can take a look at it, how it's gonna be finished. Nicole's got that one. Kentucky's a southern state. Cold and a little bit of snow. Fun fact, I've never seen snow. Never touched it, never seen it. And I really, really, really want to. It's something Nicole and I have spoken about for a while. Is Kentucky like, is that where they make the bourbon and stuff? Kentucky, is that, um, is Jack Daniels made in Kentucky? I'm not too sure. I'm not a drinker, I actually don't drink that much, so I probably couldn't tell you.
I was going to say, Teresa, you said it's cold in Victoria. I'm sure you guys are having a heat wave. 24 today, that's nice. Yeah, I heard on the radio uh, on the weekend that you guys were having a bit of heat, so hopefully you stayed nice and cool. Mount Rainier. Rainier? I've heard of Mount Rainier, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> I have heard that. The people who live with snow for a while are glad to see the back of it. And I, I probably could imagine having snow every day is probably not great. But I guess as a holiday it would be pretty cool. Just, you know, you could leave it and get warm again. Do you have um, many Floridas, uh, Floridas, <laughs> many gators in Florida? Flor Floridians, you call, don't you? I do try and educate myself a little bit uh, on the US, mainly because 90% of my fan base is in the US, and I, I love you guys. 34 in the Lockyer Valley. You can keep that, Bell. Although I have got the aircon on in the workshop and the attempt saying 31 in here. Yeah, aircon does help. Stick your head in the freezer. <laughs> I could try. Yeah, I would love to come and try the snow. Colorado, is that um, is that where you go skiing? Was that where they went in Dumb and Dumber, Colorado, and they went skiing? That's about that's how us Australians learn most of the time, watching American movies. Wow, I see them every day. They're not man eaters though, are they? The gators, although they can. I have heard of stories. <laughs> Don't say that, Michael. Okay, what do we got? Uh, resin. So back to carbide. Like, like there's so many of them that they're like a um uh what is it invasive species like you need to cull them or or are the numbers okay Tastes like chicken. That's interesting. I have to watch out for drop bears. Yeah, don't mess with the drop bears.
What the heck is a chalk fan? I don't know, Connie, you'll have to do the work. Kangaroo, tastes like duck. I'm probably a bit of a boring person. I'm like a chicken, beef, fish. Nicole will tell ya. I don't get too adventurous. Now, Dad, on the other hand, He's probably watching this. He eats everything. I hang on everything but brains, uh, kidney. What is it, Dad? Everything but brains, kidney, and something else. Haggis, maybe? I don't know. Raining in the UK. Is that pretty standard, Claire? I feel like every time I talk to someone in the UK, they tell me it's raining. And they get upset with me when I tell them to take the UV resin outside in the sun. And they're like, there is no sun. I remember my mum telling me stories about she'd finish school in the afternoon and have to walk home in the dark. Like, it was already dark at, like, 3 in the afternoon. Do I enjoy Vegemite? Not at all. It's funny, Nicole and I were talking the other day about making, like, a bit of a challenge video where we get blindfolded and let the kids feed us uh, Australian food and we all try and guess them. And I was like, man, if we get Vegemite, I'll probably vomit. I don't know if I can do it. Nicole loves it though. Rocky Mountain oysters. Uh, I've eaten mussels before, not oysters though. No, never eaten kangaroo. TPT, not sure what that means. Washington oyster. Is there a difference, Connie? Entrails of the offer table. Vegemite, yuck. I'm with you, Philip. Yeah. That's, uh, you're in Scotland. Hey, Alison. You love it. Of course you do, doll. <laughs> it's good if you eat it right. Not sure what you're talking about, Dana. No, do it a Vegemite. Oh, what? Rocky Mountain oysters are bull testicles? Are you lying to me? You've got to be lying to me. And then the next comment is Nicole. Yes, that's right, with butter. <laughs> oh, that is great. Oh, speak of the devil, there she is. You didn't hear that bit, obviously. What's that? Read this. Rocky Mountain oysters are bull testicles and they're popular. And then you're the next comment. Oh, yes. no! Yes, that's <laughs> no. right with butter. <laughs> no, 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 no. The butter with the Vegemite. Oysters are disgusting. 
That is no. no he's no. not talking about oysters. He's talking no. about bull testicles. Bull testicles. No. No, thank you. Goats nuts. No. Oh, we need to change this conversation. I'd sooner eat a whole jar of Vegemite. Oh. You always wanted to try Vegemite. Nine dollars US. Oof. Is that deer doll? Yeah. For a little jar, yeah. Rocky Mountain oysters. No, no. We're not doing Rocky Mountain oysters. Marmite. Uh, I no, don't, Marmite's no. gross. I can't do Marmite. No. No, no more Rocky Mountain oysters. We need to end that conversation. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, no, no. Aspen, Colorado, that's right. I don't no. think I don't think I'd be able to ski though. No, we're not. <laughs> we're... <laughs> no, Rose, I didn't win my Care Bear. Oh, the Care Bear. No. But you'll be pleased to know Nicole did spend. Are you ready? <laughs> no. Eighty seven dollars. Eighty seven dollars. I spent. could have gone and bought two, big ones. Eighty seven dollars. She she spent on that bloody claw machine. Oh, I had fun. Oh. Okay, as long as you Frustrating had, fun. As long as you had fun, that's all that matters. Heavy rain in Ireland. Chance of flooding. I hope you're okay, Rose. Oh, Rose talks about black pudding too. Your dad likes that, doesn't he? Black pudding? Yeah. What is black pudding? I'm not too sure. Isn't it something to do with the blood? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't have asked. Yeah. Nuts in Nutella. Yeah, damn straight, Michael. Yuck. Love Nutella. Oh, yuck. No, Alison, I'm not, I, I won't try that. Yeah, told you it was blood, yeah. <laughs> Right, back to some nice fun activities. Check this one out. Another colour shift. Oh, Nicole just brought me this one in. She's finished sanding. So once I've done this one, I'll move you over to the buff and we'll buff this up and, and take a look. But let me finish this one first. Uh, where's the dog? The dogs are back inside. 
We did have the dogs on camera early before, but um, this video will get uploaded to YouTube later. So if you want to go back, you'll be able to re-watch it and check out the dogs. Let's talk about ice cream. Yes, ice cream. Nicole loves ice cream. She often buys herself uh, an ice cream birthday cake, even when it's not her birthday. And she likes to count the little freddos that she gets inside. Don't you, Belle? Cast the rock. Connie, we're not talking about the oysters anymore. What are you doing? We're on ice cream now. Fun is the main thing. <laughs> Have to buy a Care Bear. If only you knew how many Care Bears Nicole's got. <laughs> One day I'll show you. She's got a Care Bear collection. Choc Mint. That's Nicole's favourite too. I'm just chocolate. Straight chocolate or vanilla. Not strawberry though. Not a fan of strawberry. Okay, so... This is the colour shift that we turned just before, that Nicole uh, sanded for me. So that is it before sanding. So that's straight off the machine, straight after sanding. Now I'm going to go buff this, so I'm going to move the camera, get you guys in a better position. So sit tight, I'll try not to make you seasick. Okay, how is that? Not too bad. Now I can't see the laptop now, so I can't see the comments, but I do have to turn on the dust extractor. So this is our dust extraction system here, because otherwise the compound just flies everywhere. Now if it's too noisy, um, just maybe turn the volume down a little bit, because uh, I don't want to be breathing this in. So I'm going to turn the dust extractor on and Hopefully, you guys can hear me. Okay, how's that? The extractor's on now. I'll try and be quick. So I've got my coughing compound here. I won't go too crazy, I'll just give it a quick buff so you can see what it looks like. Just a quick one. Just find a cloth so I can give it a wipe. Now 
Now, normally I buff probably three, four times longer than that. But I just wanted you guys to see just a rough, rough look at this one. Look at that. You can see that if it gets in focus. Is that in focus? I can't quite tell. I might move you guys back. Hang on a second. So this is the one that come off the lathe and this is the one I just gave a quick buff. Can you guys see it? Looks beautiful. It's hard to really pick it up on camera. Yeah, unreal. But yeah, there's still some lines in here that I'll have to buff out. So normally I buff for about 15 minutes on average, just to make sure. Because we we try and quality control these eggs through every step. As soon as they come off the lathe, as soon as they come off the sander, as soon as they come off the buff. And then even right up to before we pack them, they get checked again. Just in case they get any little nicks and scratches before they're ready to be shipped. But yeah. We, call, we quality control probably five, six times throughout the whole process. But yeah, that's amazing. Really love those ones. Okay, what's chat doing? Are we off the uh, oysters yet? By the looks of it, we're on ice cream. Good job, you guys. We're back on the ice cream. Banana. Not sure about banana. Yeah, the purple is nice. Water drop on a geo. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? Uh, resin make me itchy. No, it doesn't. Uh, I'm very fortunate to where I don't have allergies to resin. Um, Nicole has started to develop um a bit of an allergy but it's only from the resin vapor while it's while it's curing so she now has to pour her uh, resin and then get out of the room but while she is pouring she has to wear like um goggles now to stop any vapor hitting her eyes otherwise what will happen is she'll wake up the next day with puffy eyes and that's that's only just started happening in probably the last month or two and she's been working with resin almost as long as me. So uh, it's just happened out of the blue, that one. But yeah, definitely don't get itchy. No rashes, thankfully. Rocky Man, stop it, Michael. <laughs> it's not the same without the music. Oh, and the turntable. You're right. The good old winter of love. If I could have it playing, I would. Normally when I turn my eggs, I um, normally when I turn my eggs, I crank the the radio up and listen to my music. It's normally a bit of uh, Def Leppard, uh, Motley Crue. I'm very '80s rock, is what I listen to. What about you guys? What's your favourite tunes? What does it smell like? Um, right now, it doesn't smell like anything. Like once the resin's cured, not a smell at all. Uh, if you turn it and create heat while turning, it does give off like, I guess you'd call it a toxic smell, like a plastic burning smell, but the idea is to not heat the resin up. And it's the same while curing as well. While resin is curing, uh, the minute it hits that moment where it starts reacting and curing and gives off the heat, you shouldn't be anywhere near it. Like. Um, we're lucky enough that we use the pressure pot for all our curing. So once once the resin starting to heat up, it's inside the pot. That's why uh, we don't smell anything, which is good. And that's also another reason when I do let the air out of the pot, I connect the hose that is connected to my extraction fan, which gets rid of all that bad air. 
But yeah, if you are pouring resin into molds, make sure that once it does start to heat up, and that'll depend on your resin. If you're using a fast curing resin, you might only have half hour, 40 minutes. The temperature of the day will also affect it a heap as well. And if you've got a slow curing resin, obviously you've probably got maybe three, four hours. But it's best to just not be around it. Or if you if you do have to be around it, make sure you have a respirator on. Nicole and I both have respirators. Uh, if we know that we're pouring and we're going to be at a stage where we're going to be around it while it's hot, we do tend to put our respirators on. Uh, if it's very quick, uh, like if we're filming a video, it can be hard to have your respirator on and off while we're filming. So sometimes we'll kind of just not do it if we know we're only going to be around it for a few seconds. But anything long term, respirator on or you've got to get out of the room. Uh, where are we up to? How much do I have invested in my equipment? A uh, fair bit. The lathe I'm using here is two and a half thousand. Uh, I guess I've got sanders. I probably, maybe in this shop, I might have seven to eight thousand in this shop, which isn't too bad. Kiss fan. I love Kiss. I saw Kiss in concert when they come to Australia. That was quite cool. I think, are they, have they stopped touring now? I think they might be done. Classic rock. Yeah, I do love a bit of rock music. I can't get into this new stuff, like... I don't know, maybe I'm too old or what. Like, Jake will come around. Or, like, the other day, me and Jake went out and he put his music on. And I'm like, like, it's cool. Don't get me wrong, right? Like, when I was a teenager, I had the big subwoofers and the loud music. And Nicole will tell you, you know. But I think maybe as I've gotten older, I can't tolerate it as much. So, but Jake, Jake loves it. He loves going to his festivals and things. 60s and 70s rock. Yeah, there are there are a bit of that. Pink Floyd. Uh, I will film a tour of my workshop. I think I'll do it on, on this channel. We'll definitely do that. Now, I was just looking at this blank that I put on. She's a bit wobbly. You guys see that? See the run out? So I'm gonna to have to take my time with this one. It is gonna throw my hands around. But yeah, obviously during the casting process, something was amiss, so. The only problem with major run out like this is it's gonna end up being an undersized egg, I feel. So by the time I chase all that run out, out it's gonna be quite small. So you'll often see in the store, I might put in there, um, a clearance egg or something like that that's a bit smaller so we make them a bit cheaper and this is often the reason because I'm getting run out like this so hopefully it's not too bad we'll see how we go Just had to plug the charger back in the phone. Dr. Elephant. I don't think I've heard Dr. Elephant. Ah, oh, Bon Jovi. You know, Dal, I read that before I realised who actually commented it. And then I saw your name. Bon Jovi. Surely he's got to be finished touring soon. Alright, so you guys can see that. That's a lot of run out. 
and nice and slow on this one. Now the other thing as well, if you push too hard while you've got made your run out, you're going to actually push the tool in where the run out goes in, if you know what I mean. So you'll never kind of get rid of the run out, you'll just keep the run out and it'll just become smaller and smaller. So the whole idea is to keep your chisel away with light pressure and take the edges of the run out away. And if you push, you're going to be pushing in and out with the run out and that's what you don't want to do. too bad. Didn't lose too much size. I can still feel a bit of run out on the chisel. You guys might be able to hear it. I don't know if you can hear that knocking noise. So that knocking noise tells me I've still got a flat there. And if I stop it, we should be able to see it. And it's just there. It might be a bit hard for you guys to see. There is a little flat. That's not too bad though. Still a good size.
I've left a little ridge on that. It's always best to get it with your tool. There's a nice ocean one. Now we've got a universe. Where are we at, chat? What have I missed? I'll see you, Dana. Have a good night. See you, Snowball. Uh, no, ne never really thought about leaving the bases on. Oh no, house fire, that's no good. Oh no. Uh, Sprague wood turning? No. No, I haven't seen that one. Uh, all self-taught. No one's taught me anything. Just basically learn from my mistakes. Night, Snowball. Alright, at least we're not talking about oysters anymore. Okay, Universe. What time is it now? What's that, 1.30? Uh, what time we start? 10.30? 11.30? 12.30? Three hours. You guys ready for bed yet? Or you want me to keep going? I'll do one more while you think about it.
Hey, what are you guys thinking? Wow, it's getting hot in here. We're hitting 32 degrees now. 3.30 in the morning, Claire. How are you still awake? I appreciate you, though. Okay, Brian. Have a good night, mate. Yep, there'll be a couple more vlogs. We've got one tomorrow morning and one Thursday morning. That's Australian time. Got to be up for work in four hours. <laughs> you should be in bed. I'm good. I'm good to go. It's only uh, it's only 1.30 in the afternoon for me. And I've got plenty of eggs to turn. And I'm quite happy to have you guys along with me. I just don't want you guys staying up and not being able to get up for work tomorrow. Thanks, Holly. We'll catch you next time. Resin Yeti. <laughs> I feel like it sometimes. Only 98 and a half to go, Alison. You'll get there. I want to see a photo when it's finished too. Hope you can rebuild soon, Rose. Really sorry to hear about that. Hey Jeanette. Retired at 52. That's nice. Now I've had the air con on low speed because I didn't want it to be too noisy for you guys. But I'm going to turn it up because I'm absolutely dying in here. So let me know. If it gets too loud, I'll turn it back down. Right, I'll just turn the fan up a little bit. How's that? Is that not too noisy? Barely hear it, that's good. Okay. Should have had it up from the start, shouldn't I? All right, we're gonna do another wooden one. We've got another purple tree, which is one of my favorites. Really gotta get a new chuck. You guys want a different camera angle or are you good with this one I can move it if you want me to be quite funny Alison great angle good angle we're happy with this one okay I'm good but it's your show I'm here for you guys see if you guys weren't watching 
this is what I've been doing anyway, so you guys have made it more fun for me. Yeah, this is the chuck here. So because I've had this one now for, it'd have to be a couple of years, and just the constant winding down, I think has damaged the, the worm gear inside here. And it, it's just time for a new one. I do try and replace them like every 12 months, but we've been so busy lately that I just haven't had time to, to get one, but I do definitely need it. Thanks, Frank. I appreciate it. Okay, let's get going on this wooden one. So because we're doing wood, we are now back to the spindle gouge. Which must be getting close to a sharpen, I think. I feel like my burr's gone from there. Out. Now, like I said earlier, don't chase the chip out. Nice and slow, light pressure. Now, the reason I got that chip out is because I was too aggressive. I had run out. I had run out at the top here. And I was pushing too hard, and that's what gave me that chip out. So like I say, nice and easy. Nice and easy over your chip out, and you'll get it out without creating any more. I think this skew's ready for a sharpen. We're getting a tiny amount of tear out. It's not bad. I'll be able to finish this one up, but I definitely need to sharpen it before the next one.
I think we just got away with that one. We're gonna have to sharpen. How are you guys going? You hanging in there? Must be getting quite late for some of you now. New chuck, I do have to add it to my to-do list. Yeah, that was cool. I love that Back to the Future one. We were talking about that a bit earlier, how I need to get on and do the number three, and I want to do it with the train. Good night, tourist. Hope you have a good night, buddy. Right, let's get this off here. We'll get our skew chisel sharpened. I'll move you guys over to the grinder. Try and move you slowly so you don't get seasick. Okay, how's that? I'll try and get you a bit closer. Now you might be noisy because you're right under the aircon now. So my skew was getting blunt and I'm now on my wet grinder. here place on now I've got you guys where I normally line this up so I'll get on this side so I'm just basically matching the angle that's already there That aircon's not too noisy for you. Feels great blowing on my head though. So I'm basically just taking enough off until I start to feel a burr on the top edge here. Never leave your water 
on your stone because it'll soak it up and it'll ruin one side of your stone. So I'm not sure if you guys can see that, but there's a little burr just at the end of the chisel there. And that's what I was aiming for. Thought I'd take you off the tripod for a little bit. You haven't seen my face for a while. How's everyone doing? You all staying awake? How late is it now? Oh, my hair's a mess. <laughs> Must be pushing, what, four or five in the morning for some of you guys? Oh, we're talking about dinner now. What are we having for dinner, doll? Not too late, it's getting early now. Hope we're here for dinner. Oh, sausage and chips. That's all we're having, that's right. We spoke about it last night, didn't we? I've started watching this guy on YouTube. It's called uh, uh, Beard Beard Meets Food. I think he's been around forever. And uh, he popped up on my feed. So we started watching him on a night. Me and Nicole put YouTube on and we just flipped through everything. And he started popping up. And there was an episode last night where he was eating chips. And he poured all this gravy over the top. And we both looked at each other and we were like, damn, we could go some chips and gravy. But it was like 9.30 at night or 10 o'clock at night. We'd already had dinner. So we said, right, tomorrow we're having chips and gravy. <laughs> so yeah, that's right. That's what we're having. Uh, all right, let me get you guys back on this tripod. Three fifty in the morning. Wow, we appreciate all you guys. You're absolutely amazing. I'd be fast asleep. <laughs> okay, what are we thinking about there? Is that looking good? We should hopefully clear it up. Once I put an egg on there, it should focus. Almost midnight. Thanks, Stranded. 3.50 in the UK. Claire, you need to go to sleep. 8.50 Monday night. That's not too bad. Connie, hey. Oh, what is Burr? Yeah, so when I when I grind the metal, hopefully you guys can see it. So when I grind this edge, it creates a burr. So a burr is basically a folded over piece of metal, and it you can it catches on your nails, so you can kind of feel it. So this side there is no burr, and this side has the burr on it, and that's what helps uh, cut the resin. Uh, unlike a knife or a blade where you want this to be like super sharp when you do resin you don't want it sharp you actually want to keep that little bit of burr on there that's what help cuts it yeah chips and gravy with mushrooms Nicole's not a fan of mushrooms I don't mind them Oh, that's great thanks Brian yeah YouTube's funny like it must know how much I love my food that's for sure because um, yeah that guy's quite funny he does a lot of the the food eating challenges uh, where if you finish it you get it for free and all that kind of stuff and man he's so funny yeah the um, beard meets food I think it's called 
Never had chips and gravy. Connie, you're lying, surely. Or is it fries? Fries and gravy? Thanks, Therese. Glad you were here. Yeah, you don't know what you're missing, Connie. Wow. Connie, you gotta do me a favor. You gotta have chips and gravy. But your gravy, your gravy has to be thick. Like, don't go for runny gravy. It has to be thick. And like, yeah, smother it all over your chips. Have them go a little bit soggy. Man, you'll love it. You'll definitely thank us for it. Chips in America is crisp French fries. And I think the thicker the better. Like McDonald's chips, too thin, you need the thicker ones. Maybe, are they called, uh, hey Dal, are they called beer, beer fries? Steak, or oh, steak chips, maybe. Yeah, brown gravy. Depends what gravy you like, I guess. Beef, beef gravy? What, what do we use, Dal? What's our gravy? Uh, I'm not sure po Poutine Poutine I'm not sure what poutine is Pow Poutine Yeah, the thicker the fry the better get a nice thick uh, steak fry Make up some gravy on the stove Pour it over the top. Oh, it's beautiful Absolutely beautiful. You're making me hungry. I haven't had lunch. Must be nearly lunchtime for sure. Okay, are we ready for another one? What about a dragon skin? Look at this one. And his base. Look at the purple in there. Or mauve, I guess you'd call it. I must be way behind. Oh, you're way behind. Just talking about the gravy. <laughs> yeah, what gravy do we use? We use the Gravox traditional. Traditional. So what's that, beef? Uh, yeah, I think so. Just like a roast meat flavour. And that's the nice thick one, hey? Yeah. Well, you've got to make it thick. It's the powder, and then you've got to add water. And then, oh, on the stove, On hey? the stove, yeah. And then just keep whisking it. Yeah. So, steak fries. Yeah, thick, nice thick, and thick chips. Yeah, yeah. thick chips. Doesn't work with thin ones. No, thin ones. I said that you can't. You can't have the McDonald's style. It no. has to be, has to be thick. Yeah. Um, yeah, little planks. That's it, Connie. Go for that. So go for your steak fries, and then mix up some gravy. So it, it like a powdered gravy mix. I yeah. guess. Yeah. Yep. Even the they do that new packet one now. That's already like pre-made. Oh, it's already pre-made. Yeah, Gravox do that one. Yep. So I'm, we're not sure if you guys have Gravox in the States, but that's kind of our go-to uh, gravy. Um, cheese curds. What's a oh, what's that? What's a cheese curd? I've never heard of that. It's almost midnight, Lily. You need to go to bed. Thick and chunky, yep. And, yep, bit of salt. See, Connie, now you're getting into it. <laughs> <laughs> We're making everyone hungry on there. Yeah. Gravy granules or... Uh, no, gravy granulates. Yeah, not the Bisto. I've never used the Bisto, but... What's Bisto? It is it is like a powder. I've seen it oh, in okay. um, Woolies, but... No, I've never used it, but definitely go with the gravy granules. Yeah. Yeah, probably make your own. That way you can make it thick. Yeah. Just get it on the stove and 
and uh, simmer it until it thickens right up. And we just do our chips in the air fryer. Yeah, in the air fryer. We don't deep fry anything, uh, even though we look like we do. Um, <laughs> we do we do try and stay stay healthy with that. So yeah, we air fry it. Oh, dip your fries in vinegar. That's different. Oh, apple cider vinegar. Yeah. So you do that before cooking them, or you do that after, like you just dip them in vinegar after you cook them? Oh, after. Oh, yeah, so it's just like, you know how mum used to put vinegar uh, on it? She used chips? to use balsamic vinegar. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Makes it a bit tangy, I guess. Different flavour. Yeah, homemade gravy. We don't have the time for that, but you're right. Homemade gravy would definitely be the way to go. I can't say I've ever made it from scratch. Uh, I'm sure we've done once when we cooked roast, haven't we? With the oh, I used with the, the leftover, leftover roast. Yeah. Peanut sauce. Oh. It's different. Okay, let's get back to Turner. We're digressing. <laughs> We're I'm going to take it's, some more of these. It's, what time is it now? What's that? Two o'clock? Way past lunchtime. Did you want any lunch? I'm getting proper hungry. Here's another one, Dolph. Oh. Um, no, I'm okay. I'll keep going. Alrighty. Sing I'll, out if you do. I will. I'll look forward to my chips and gravy for dinner. Okay. <laughs> Alright, so this one is the dragon skin. Can you guys see that? Beautiful purple or mauve colour, I guess you'd call it. Get my helmet back on. Wow, we've been streaming for three and a half hours. You guys are absolutely amazing. I love all of you. Oh yes, yeah, salt and vinegar. I love salt and vinegar with the chips, like the crisps, I guess you call them. But I eat so many of them, it destroys my mouth. I wake up the next day and my mouth's all sore. I don't know. I, I can't just have a handful. i got to have the whole packet. Thanks, Lily. Okay. Uh, what have we got? Resin. Back to carbide.
Can you see how much nicer this cuts now after a uh, sharpen? Beautiful. Look at this purple one. It's beautiful. How's everyone going? You're still awake? Yes, Claire. I want chips and gravy now too. Oh, chip soldiers. I haven't had egg with soldiers since I was a kid. And mum used to cook the toast and cut it into those thin strips. I never thought to do it with chips though. That's such a brilliant idea. Chip soldiers, yeah. What other makers do I like to watch? Um, to be honest, I don't watch too many lately. Um, but obviously Peter Brown, Nick, uh, Jedrick, they're probably the main three. Uh, yeah, I, it's funny. I, I kind of live and breathe um, making so much that when it is time to relax and watch TV, I kind of watch more car-related stuff, I guess. Um, you guys know that I'm, I'm into my cars, so that's kind of how I unwind, uh, is with my car stuff. But, but yeah, every now and again, I'll, I'll watch those guys and see what they're up to, but, but yeah, not very often. Alright, let's get going on this one.
Are we still talking about chips? <laughs> Live streams turned into chips and gravy. I think it has too. And I'm really hungry. <laughs> <laughs> Surely there's some someone open in Chicago right now willing to cook your chips and gravy. Uh, no, potato wedges are different to chips. Uh, chips, uh, I think we said before, like your steak fries. <laughs> Ben's chips. I'm really hungry now. We might have to end this live stream. I think I'm gonna have to have some lunch. <laughs> what are we now? Nearly 2.30. I've been turning for nearly four hours. What do you think guys? We do one more? What do you want to see? Do you want to see a wooden one or a resin one? I got some resin universe, resin cow, I mean wooden universe, wooden cow, I got a resin universe, another wooden universe, I got a resin jellyfish, you vote wooden. Thanks, Brian. We appreciate you being here, mate. So what do we got? One wooden. Wooden. Okay, let's go wooden. Okay, let's do a wooden universe. I remember painting this one. I put like a little uh, sprinkle of, I don't know what you call it, a bit of colour shift in the middle there. I was trying to create like kind of a crater I don't know if you guys can see it too well there's a little line oh, my fingers covering it a little line of color shift in the middle there to be like a crater so let's do this one we'll make this our last one that way all you guys can go to bed and I can go have some lunch I'll get Nicole to come in and say goodbye as well Feel like we need to make a um, a cooking episode where we all make chips and gravy together. <laughs> okay, last one.
seems like a lot of run out on this one. Sometimes if I get run out after I've started, the waste blocks moved in the truck, but it seems okay. That's just really weird. Anyway, we'll keep going. Okay, last one is done. This one's gonna look amazing when it's finished. How's everyone doing? You come back for the last egg. Yes, you did. Yep, I'm gonna love my chips and gravy.
I'm Chip Nicole is gravy. She is all gravy. Uh, the back is a little sore, and my feet, and my hands, but that's okay. <laughs> Thanks, Visible Friend. We do have an amazing community. We love all you guys. You guys have been around for a long time. Well, I think we had a good day. Let's, uh, let's get you off that tripod so we can say goodbye to you guys. You're a bit dusty, hang on. There you go. How do I look? I'm looking in the laptop. <laughs> Let's go find Nicole. Darling, you gonna come in here so we can say goodbye to our lovely people? Our lovely people. That sounds terrible. Our lovely friends. That's what you are. Amazing friends. Hope you guys had a good time. What did we go for? Nearly four hours. That's pretty good. Now, you guys know I don't normally live stream, but man, I had so much fun. Like, talking to you guys is amazing and it helps pass the time too. Like, I had to turn all these eggs. Like, these are our eggs for our sale for this Saturday and talking to you guys just makes time fly. So, I uh, really enjoyed it. I wonder what Nicole's doing. We might have to go find out. She might be sanding. Right. Beautiful sunny day. Oh, here she is. You saying goodbye? Oh, see you. Thanks for coming to hang out with us. Yeah. Still got all your little trinkets going. Yeah. No, I've been trying to sand the eggs first. Yep. Yeah, we got to get the eggs sanded. So. Oh, yeah. Well, we hope you guys enjoyed this live stream. If you guys want to see more like this, let us know. And uh, yeah, uh, tomorrow we got a vlog and the next day is another vlog yep. where we did our resin experiment. I can't remember if I told you guys that it ended up in the freezer. <laughs> it was a you've bit got, of a mess. You've got to watch, you got it. watch it. It's, it's not great, but it's going to be this Saturday's video. Um, yeah, so hopefully you guys enjoy that. We really appreciate each and every one of you. Um, love you guys and we'll catch you on the next one. See you guys. See ya.